We're going to start with experiment 6.1, growing crystals. So you're going to do this at home, um, but this video is here so you can watch it while you're doing it if you want to. You can just follow the book too if you want to. It's up to you. Um, but you will find experiment 6 either in the textbook on page 156 or even better because then you can um, record your observations and things on page 451 of the student notebook. So we're going to, I'm going to be looking at 451 on the student notebook, though they are the same. Um, so right now I want you to read through the experiment before we move on. So like when you're cooking, you should read through all of the, the steps of the recipe. When you're doing an experiment, it's best to read through all of the steps so you know what you're trying to do, okay? So pause this video for a minute and read through all of the steps, especially all the materials, and go gather your materials right now. So, so now you should have your materials with you. So I'm gonna go through those materials to make sure we all have them. So you should have some alum. I gave you some of this in, in the, the kit that I sent home with you. So the powder, white powdery substance is alum. You should have a small glass. I gave you a, just a canning jar. A liquid measuring cup, so you're gonna need to get that from home, but just some sort of liquid measure. Uh, measuring, oh sorry, a small spoon for dispensing. I'm going to be using a teaspoon so that I can know exactly how, me, how much alum I'm putting in. A large spoon just for stirring. Some thin rough string. So I'll have, you'll have a piece of this in your kit. A large plate. A few rocks from outside. Again, from home, just go grab a couple of rocks. A magnifying glass, which will be in your kit, but I'm hoping you bring this back because this is HSC property. A stove. You'll need to use your stove and adult supervision for the stove. Um, a pot to heat water. And then when you're at the stove, an oven mitt. And then eye protection goggles. So I will be giving you a pair of these again. They're HSC um, materials, so please bring them back to class next week so we can put them back with our HSC stuff. All right, so now that you've read through the uh, experiment and you have your materials, the question this experiment is trying to answer is, what does the term crystalline mean or crystalline? And so write what you think will happen once the powdered alum is dissolved into water and allowed to cool. So that's in your hypothesis. You're going to write when the alum cools, it will do this. So whatever you think will happen. And now we're going to start on our procedure. Oh, so pause the video, write in your hypothesis. And now we're going to start on the procedure. So procedure one is add two cups of water to the pot and heat it until boiling. So I'm going to pause this video, go over to the stove, and we should all do that. Heat up the water till boiling. So the instructions say for part two, for procedure number two, it says while you're waiting for the water to boil, cut a piece of string so it's three times as long as your juice glass is tall. So actually you have a piece of string um, in, your, in your kit that I gave you to take home. It should be if you're going to use the jar that I also sent home as your jar, um, this is three times as long. And then it says, attach a weight to each end of the string. So I'm also giving you two washers in your kit. And, um, and so these we will tie to the ends of our string. So do that while you're waiting for your water to boil. You're just going to tie 
your string to your washers. And why don't we pause this while you do that. So now you should have a string with just washers tied on both ends. And here, I originally gave you twine, which you just saw, um, but I'm actually going to give you thread instead. I did this experiment at home and found that you were able to see the crystals better on the thread. So just look for that, um, you'll have thread. And um, when later on, you'll see that I did both and that you could see it better on the thread. And just a quick note, I'm giving you alum to take home. Um, this is should be more alum than you need. So just know that don't just dump the whole thing in. You should be putting it, you know, either use a teaspoon or a, or a tablespoon, um, scoop by scoop till you get it where it just starts to get cloudy. So you're, you probably won't need all of the alum that I gave you and anything left over just toss in the trash can. And now let's go see if our water is boiling. So I'm using a teaspoon and I'm putting a teaspoon of my alum in and I'm going to stir until it dissolves. It says continue to add alum until you cannot get any more to dissolve. So there's two teaspoons. It says you will know you have reached that point when the water gets cloudy and will not clear up regardless of how much you stir. It's three. Careful. This is why you're wearing your glasses, your goggles. It's starting to look cloudy to me. This is eight teaspoons. I think I might add a few more. It's still seeming to dissolve okay. All right, so that looks like it's a little bit cloudy to me. So that took 10 teaspoons. And now it says, let the pot stand for a few minutes and the undissolved alum will settle to the bottom. I'm sure this is hard to see from your perspective, but it looks reasonably clear. So now I'm going to start pouring it into my glass here. And you want to be very careful. Again, you should be wearing your eye protection. And I'm going to fill this glass about halfway full. And you want to just try not to disturb the stuff on the bottom. And you'll fill your glass till it's about halfway. And so now it says you should have some reasonably clear solution in the glass. And so we're going to put on an oven mitt or some sort of glove so that because this water is still really, really hot to protect our hands and we're going to set the glass on on the plate. All right, so now we're going to take our plate and we're going to put our hot water on the plate again. It's really hot down here, so be careful not to touch that. And now it says to drop one end of the string into the glass and the weight should keep the string at the bottom of the glass. And then put the other end of, on the plate. So your setup should look like in the picture. All right, so here is in the notebook. It says step 12, draw your experimental setup. So you'll draw a picture of this in your notebook. And now it says, let your experiment sit for several hours or preferably overnight. 
So um, if you have time to let it sit overnight, I would do that. You want to find a place where it's not going to be disturbed, which in my house is kind of hard, but I will find a place up high on a shelf where it can sit overnight, and then we will complete the rest of this. All right, so now it's time to look at our string. I did it with both twine and with thread, and I'm hoping to be able to, that you'll be able to see this. Hopefully at home you'll be able to see this too. All right, so here's my setup, and here is my thread. And look, at you can see it's kind of hard for this to focus. Um, I don't know if you can see that. You can see some crystals on the thread. It's harder to see them. Let me see if I can get the light behind them. It's harder to see on this twine, but there are crystals there too. And so you'll draw what you saw here on page 453 of your student notebook. And then it says to lay a dark paper out on a table and shake the string so some crystals fall onto the paper and use your magnifying glass to examine the crystals if possible. Now the uh, experiment wants us to look at them and they suggest putting them on a dark piece of paper that we may, might be able to get a better look at these crystals. So up here is the thread without the crystals on it. You can see some crystals there. Right here, they're really small. And if we look at our twine, It's harder to see because there's lots of little spaces, which is why I recommended at the beginning of this video to use the, the thread. There's a crystal there. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your magnifying glass and you're going to look at these up close and then you're going to also look just at a rock. You're going to see if uh, yeah, there's that little crystal. So they're very small. I think the reason they're so small is because we used powdered alum. But look at that crystal with a magnifying glass. And now on the next page for data table 6.1, step 18. What differences do you see between the rocks and the crystals? So you should look at some rocks that you can just find outside and um, just try to compare those with the crystals as best you can. It, it, it might be hard to see, the crystals will be very small. I'm sure that's because our powdered aluminum was very fine. And so once you've done that, then you're also going to do your conclusion. Write about the differences between crystals and rocks. And then you'll be done with this experiment.